I work with a lot of organizations, diverse organizations, trying to help them improve to reach their potential using process improvement methodologies. And when I go to these organizations, I find a lot of professionals working very, very hard, and they're very, very frustrated. I routinely ask, in your 40 to 60 hour day work week, how much time do you get to think? How much time do you get to be proactive? How much time do you get to apply what you've been trained to do in your workplace? And sadly, the answer that comes back is single digits and sometimes zero. Now, what lean process improvement methodology will do is provide a way to find hours of wasted activity that is disguised as productivity and call that time out so that you can use that time to think and to reach your human potential. Now, I'm not going to tell you that uh, lean is glamorous. It really isn't. Um, it's just a meticulous process of how to remove waste and constraints from reaching your potential or any entity, uh, entity re reaching their potential. Now, lean is not an acronym. It was coined from a book written by Womack, Jones, and Roos called The Machine That Changed the World. And what they did is they studied the Toyota production system. And this methodology, used mostly in manufacturing, has found 30% reductions in the time it takes to satisfy customers. My passion has been to apply this to all the other, lean bus all the other business processes. And also we're seeing uh, very promising results in applying this to healthcare. But I'm also seeing students of this methodology taking this at home for individual processes in the office and, and what they do it in the house. Now, what lean is, is basically, it's very simple, it's basically seeing a process as it develops to satisfy a customer. And the next step is to remove all those tasks that don't add any value to the customer. And then the third step is to look really careful to find wastes, these seven wastes that I'm going to talk about that disguise themselves as productivity. Okay? Now, in the road to your human potential, the customer is you. And what you have to do first is try to eliminate those things that aren't congruent or the things that don't add value to you. And the next step is what I'm going to walk you through now is looking at those seven wastes that disguise themselves as productivity and see how we can reduce those wastes using lean countermeasures. Okay, the first waste is inventories. Now, I'm not going to tell you and spend time uh, about talking about cleaning out your garage or your closet, although you know you should and you know who you are. <laughs> what I am going to talk about is an inventory of things that you have, things that you've started, projects that you've started and haven't completed, and we all have them. And what happens is we keep building up more and more projects that we don't complete because we have an inner need to have a high utilization rate. That means if we stay busy every minute, we'll be more effective. But a really high utilization rate is not effective, and nor is it the goal of the human potential. What happens is we start these projects, and we keep, while we have to wait for something, we wait for more information, or we wait for somebody to get back to us, we start something else. And then we start something else. And then we start something else. And there's a tipping point. When we reach this tipping point, we spend more time managing all our projects than we actually do making progress on our projects. So what we have to do is step back from that. And what Lean would tell us in a manufacturing setting, which would apply to the human potential, is that you need to find a bucket of projects that you can work and find out what that optimum is. It may be a few more, a few less for different people, but find out what that is for you and then don't exceed that bucket then when you complete something in that bucket, you move it out, and then you bring in the next project that you have in. Believe it or not, projects will work much faster than that if you work them a few at a time. That's Little's Law. The second waste is transportation. Now in transportation, you don't move product in a manufacturing plant. How you reach your human p potential is by moving information. But the problem is the methodology we use our, to move our uh, information is not so good. It's email, isn't it? And this is what happens with emails. We become so 
uh, adept at doing emails, we try to be efficient while not being effective. We want to be really fast at emails. And we, our emails become so short that the people we send them to perceive that we are short. And we don't send complete thoughts. And when we don't send complete thoughts, that ju just begets another email. And so now we're playing email ping pong, back and forth, back and forth to get this information. Um, uh, Sherry Turkle, she's an MIT professor, has written a book called uh, Alone Together, Why We Expect More From Technology and Less From Each Other. And what she talks about is that we've dumbed down our emails to the point, or any communication, to the point where we don't ask questions that would take a, a, quick re a longer response. We want something really fast, as if speed is more important than the content. Now, other people send really, really long emails, and we wonder, what did they want? Where is it in the request and what they need? How can I help this person? Or it's so long I don't have time to read it and we wait to get to it later. And then some people hit reply all to everybody in the whole list to ask a, a question that just talks about one. Now all these things cause problems with the way we communicate and get our knowledge done. A lean countermeasure to this is something that's in a, a book called The Hamster Revolution. Uh, it, it's a diligence to apply to your um, emails and a protocol that will not only improve the quality of your emails, but reduce the quantity of your emails by about 20%. The next waste is motion. Now, you don't spend a lot of time moving, in, maybe in your office, in your, in, wherever you work, to get your, reach your human potential. Maybe um, motion isn't a big deal unless you're a soccer mom or dad, or I'm a volleyball dad driving people around. But what you do is a mental motion. Okay, so you're searching for information in your mind. And like Andrew said before, that takes a lot of time. It could take a year of your life. When you search for information, many times you're looking in a computer. And what I find in, in working with people is that people spend an average of 30 times a day, an average, looking into their computer. And that might take a minute or two each time. And that's about an hour a day. And as Andrew mentioned out, that's about a year of your life. And not only is that one hour lost, maybe a day, but then there's another type of motion that's lost. So you're looking for the file, and I say, I'm looking for that file, I'm looking for that file. Where's that file? Where's that file? What's this file? Wait a minute, I haven't seen this file in a long time. Oh, wow! Look, that file. Okay, you know what? Joe needed that information last week. And here it is. Hey, Joe, I got that information you needed last week. Oh, you don't need it anymore. Well, this was what you wanted. Oh, you use something else. Oh, but that's not as good. Oh, all right. Well, time's up. Okay, but the next time you need it, I, I have it. Okay. All right. Okay, that's done too bad. All right, back to where I was. Let me do my email. No, notice the fact that we also wasted the two minutes. We, we wasted and we went on in a different path, and we go back to our default mode of going back to email. We got lost with this motion. So Lean has a methodology for you to find, be able to find things, uh, and that is for just, I'll talk about the first two steps. The first step is to sort, right? So what you need to do is go into all your file folders and pick out the ones you don't need, because what has to happen is you have to go through what you don't need to get what you do need. So you take and create a separate folder off to your computer, and you just uh, sort by name. Look at all these names that are the same. Do I need them all? Move them over that to that folder. Then I look at uh, uh, date and look at all those dates. Well, wait a minute, this one's so old, I don't need it. Or I do, and oh, here it is. If you don't need it, move it over. And then sort by size. You know that joke video that was uh, 10 megabytes uh, that was funny three years ago? I probably don't need it anymore, so I'll drag it over there. And you can hold that there for a while. Now you don't have to search for the files you don't need to get to the files you do need. And at some point, you can put it on CD or just delete it. Another thing you can do is put it back in an order. The second step in Lean is to put it back in order. And I've tried many different ways of how, what's the best way to order, organize a computer. Again, in this Hamster Revolution book, it talks about CODA system. C-O-T-A. We all have customers, internal or external. We all have outputs. We produce something. We all have a team we work on, and we all have administrative stuff. If you use those four categories and then fill within them, you'll be able to find your folders much faster. So now on to the next waste, and that is waiting. And we all spend time waiting, waiting for approvals, waiting for decisions, waiting for information. 
Now, Lean will teach a methodology of how to get through these waiting periods or reduce them or even eliminate them when you're working in teams. But right now, you're not working with your team. But how can you work within your circle of influence to eliminate some of the waste of t waiting? One of the big problems of waiting is while you're waiting, what do you do? You start the other project and start going above that list. So what you need to train yourself to do is while you're waiting, think. That's maybe some time you can think. Or reorganize your computer during those small period of times. But just don't jump to starting the next uh, uh, project. The next waste is defects. Now defects cause lots of problems and sometimes they're very embarrassing. And we, when we collaborate in reaching our human potential, we pass on defects to other people and then there's a lot of rework and that rework takes a lot of time. Well, the problem isn't that we're not smart enough or that we need more training. The problem is that we live with so much complexity and multiplicity in what we're doing, we forget stuff. The mistakes we're making aren't really bad judgmental mistakes for the most part. They're, I forgot that. So a lean would provide a standard work and a checklist that would help you remember, even on these things, to prevent all the rework. Now, Atul Gawande, he's a, a surgeon from Boston, and he's written a book called The Checklist Manifesto, and it talks about how to write your own checklists that they're not so long that you can't use them, but they're just the, the major things that are important to make you don't make the mistakes. Now, this has been used in, in surgery, so doctors picked the 19-point checklist that were the big things that caused fatalities in surgery. And after using that 19-point checklist, surgery fatalities were reduced by 40%. So checklists, because everything's so complicated and there's so much multiplicity, will really help us in reducing defects and the rework that goes with it, allowing us more time for the human potential. The next step is overprocessing. Now, overprocessing in lean means handling something more than the customer really wants. Now, what I translate that to in what's uh, constraining your human potential is multitasking. Okay, what multitasking is is starting up and stopping, starting up and stopping, working on different things. And it's actually impossible for the brain to focus consciously on two things at one time. Computers can't even do it. They just do it so fast that we don't recognize it. But you can't concentrate it on, on two things at one time. David Crenshaw, who wrote the book, The Myth of Multitasking, says what we are actually doing is switch tasking. We are going from one thought to the next thought. And that thought process takes time. And that time slows us down and increases our errors tremendously. In his book, he quotes the Federal Aviation Administration in the University of Michigan, who did a study that says, people doing two activities at one time, say an email and working on a contract, will lose 20 to 40% of their efficiency. Not doing these things will allow us to have more time for the human potential. And, and you take these examples at home, we're bringing more work at home, how many of us have been trying to get that important email to the boss while we're working at home and the kids are asking us, hey daddy, hey daddy, and we'll say we'll be with you and we've said that 10 times and then all of a sudden in exasperation we send, hit send to the boss the wrong thing and yell at the kids, what do you want? So all those things cause, and that's an error. So th that's um, another thing that constrains our human potential. And then the final one is overproduction. We just produce too much just in case. And, and other things we do is produce things too early. And when we're working on a human potential, we're working with ideas. And sometimes when we produce knowledge too early, that knowledge gets obsolete by the time it's needed. And that's a tremendous cost to the knowledge world, is our knowledge going obsolete. Now, I've given you an overview of Lean in a very, very short period of time. And like I told you, there's nothing glamorous about it but it's all free. Everything that I told you took no investment except some of your time, and what I think is best is to make that investment in time when the relative value is low, and you'll receive a return of investment when the relative value of time is very high. Now, I wanna thank you very much for your time, and good luck on your journey to your human potential. The world could really use it. Thank you.